Okay, just waiting for the next league match. Starts in about half an hour. So, what's the thoughts? What's the process? Well, as usual, just stick with the mantra. Stick with what we've been practicing and don't make anything new in the game. There's no point. Just got to basically maintain the status quo of our current game process because at the end of the day it works it's simple it's direct and it makes sense to us so that's what we're wanting to do you know we want to be able to say to ourselves we put the hundred percent in of what we have been learning and if the opponent does something weird reassess it calculate it utilize the skills that we've got within the answer process and react accordingly not a fictitious type of oh we think the computer would probably do this because at the end of the day we don't play like a computer so we don't then know the follow-on maneuvers after that reason why we're talking about that is because the last game we pushed the pawn up because it looked good it, it had a good rationale behind it but it lost us tempo in developing our other pieces and keeping things basic and simple and straightforward so that I can understand it then at least I'm going to enjoy the game better than being on the back foot right from the very beginning of the game first three moves are crucial if we get past those first three moves and we're utilising the mantra, I think, I think we should be okay. It's just maintaining and just keep working. Don't feel any pressure. Don't rush the moves. Don't go speedy or anything like that. And definitely look for early, early position improvements. If it's going to the end game, then... I think we're fairly comfortable about playing the end game. I'm not scared of the end game anymore. Um, it used to confuse the hell out of me, um, but now I understand it. No devil finger. None of that. We're not having any of those things today. We want to come away from it thinking and believing that we have put our best into the game. Um, no excuses or anything because I want to have rationales for what we've done and hopefully gained advantages if it's a draw it's a draw um, but hopefully trying to push maybe to push past the draw mentality and see if there's a potential for a better position for us and if there isn't not over pressing but definitely don't want to under impress in the opening so that's all I've got to say for now and fingers crossed we come up trumps and we gain some type of advantage or a solid draw okay this is today's over the board league match and we played as black our opponent was rated 16 17 and we are rated 13 20 at the moment so they opened with d4 and we blocked the pawn off. We said in our pre-warm-up chat to ourselves that we wanted to just keep things as simple as possible and just stick with the mantra and work with what we have been practicing. So they pushed through with their pawn and we brought the knight up supporting the pawn. Then they developed their knight. And we developed our bishop. Opened up the dark squared bishop space so we can hopefully go and get castled. Then they bring the bishop down, nothing unusual there, so all pretty normal, ordinary stuff. And then we get castled. So the first three moves was our key thing, and um, just keeping that as normal as possible for ourselves which has helped us get to this point here. So we felt really, really happy um, about this position. 
And then they brought the bishop out. Nothing unusual for us. So we captured and captured. Queen captured. And we developed the knight. So seeing this pawn move here. Didn't worry too much about that. We were happy that we developed our pieces. Then last piece that was on the back was the queen really. We haven't linked up the rooks yet. But we have got castled. So we're feeling half decently good about our position. So we take the pawn off the board. And then the queen comes and captures. So we've got a discover check on their bishop. So it's a double attack. Knight attacking the knight, but also attacking the bishop. Bishop does take. We take back with the knight. And then smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Then the queen comes and it's x-raying through onto our b pawn. Also, we can see that the rooks will be owning that file, the c file. And we may be... Not on the back foot, I didn't feel like we were on the back foot, but we needed to be aware that we were now going to have to play a little bit more defensive and get some counterplay as best possible throughout the rest of the game. So it really was about counter-attacking, counter-play, defence, counter-defence, counter counter and there was not going to be any real explosion towards the King area, I could tell from this position. And at this point did kind of offer a draw and they said oh no let's play on I thought fair enough they're a higher rated player they've got to see if they can get a win from the lower rated player so we attacked the knight and they brought the rook across looking to start the process for owning the file with the rooks so we take the knight off the board so simplification is, is the order of the day for us anyway a uh, bit shocked that they took with the queen. I thought they were going to take with the pawn or the rook. More the rook, so, you know, for owning the file. So, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. We attack the queen and then move back again to attack the b-pawn. Always for the b-pawn. Did um and ah about this um, rook manoeuvre. Did take a while over this move. I took a while over quite a lot of the moves, actually, just to give it some thought. Because... At the end of the day, this knight is chomping at the bit to come here because it has a golden square here where it can get a fork on the rooks. If this pawn had been pushed up, the knight would have been jumping into this square here and potentially harassing the rook and the queen. So this is going to be a golden square for the knight. How can we circumvent that? By keeping the pawn here supported as best possible, getting this pawn up as well just so we can open up space maybe for the queen, give it a bit of life. So those were the calculations that we were, um, were taking place. There was nothing focused towards the king Gary at all because there was going to be immense pressure put on this C file with the rooks and the queen. So the knight does jump in there, so not, not surprised at all because it was part of the calculation. And we pushed the pawn up as we did in our calculation. Then the queen comes down, it's attacking the pawn that's unprotected. Simply defended by just pushing the pawn up. Did look for any trickery going on, you know, like any potential sacrifices with this situation. Didn't look to be, so we just pushed the pawn up. So then the rook comes down looking to solidify the um, ownership of the file with their rooks. But at this point, I'm looking for counterplay as we mentioned so attacking the queen which is a higher piece but realistically looking to attack the knight and the rook so we can get the knight off the board if they're asleep we'll take the rook but they look look a bit switched on so i think basically they'll just be taking the knight and we can take the knight off the board with the queen So the queen does move and we bring the knight quickly. This was the quickest move I did in the match, I think, because it was just a matter of let's get this off the board and let's see what about this ownership of this file with the rooks. So they do capture and capture. At this point, again, I did actually offer a draw because um, it does look drawish to me, but um, human eyes and everything, I'm just like thinking. And they did stop for a moment. They did kind of do a half nod type thing and but you know let's play on so we played on so this must have been like the second hour um at this point i'm thinking oh my word <laughs> you know i hope i don't start flagging i'd had my red bull and um i was feeling really pepped up but then you can have that 
dip. So they bring the rook across now, attacking the pawn. And we bring our rook across now, supporting the pawn. And they bring the queen in. So they've got the battery that we'd already envisaged and seen. And the queen has come to a square where I'm thinking, well, okay, I don't know if that's a good place to go or not. In my human eyes, that looks like my small piece can attack your higher piece. So we push the pawn up onto the queen. And the queen goes back. And we wanted to get our rook here. But the picture that we had seen was that this pawn or a pawn that is situated on this file is going to be pushing onto our rook. But the longer term gains for that in my head from what I calculated, a very strange calculation, uh, was getting my queen here. And if they did push this pawn, we could, in essence, take the pawn. If they've already brought this pawn down, then they're supporting the taking here because they'll be hell bent on trying to get the rook. Can we get our rook to the back to win a bit of tempo? Because that then would circumvent their rook actually taking this pawn. Because if their rook did take the pawn, we'd be able to take their rook with a check on their king. The queen would have to take and then they would lose their rook. So that was the... That was the, whatever, it wasn't a fancy calculation. It was a calculation that I said, this is the only way I can actually get out of this um, squish because they're so focused on this pawn. So it might have been a bit of a risk, but it, it looked favorable for me as best possible anyway. So we brought the rook up. And then at this point, I'm thinking, well, are they going to start pressing the pawns down, you know, pushing here and leaning onto this pawn here? But obviously, this is going to be coming to attack this. And we should be able to come across and work the magic on that position. But they push their pawn down, give their king some space. And I'm, I was hoping and praying that they didn't move it because that was the only thing we would we had in our back pocket was the potential for coming around the side here. So we made space for our king, just in case anything kicked off, but also to elevate the pawn a little bit and um, maybe start pushing the pawns on the king's side if need be. Okay, a lot of arrows there. So that's basically explaining the situation that we looked at earlier, which was getting the queen to this position here because the pawn has pushed itself down it's looking to actually touch onto this pawn. If we take, then it takes, then our rook can come to the back and actually attack the rook. And as we mentioned, if they do take, we can take the rook off the board with a check. And then we're in that situation where they lose the other rook as well. So I don't think it was too many steps of calculation ahead. I think it might even be a four move calculation if I'm thinking correctly. Yeah, so it comes down, we take one, two, yeah, it's about three or, yeah, three or four. So now we're wanting to get the king into the game because we're just waiting for this manoeuvre to come down. So we've got something in our heads already about what we're planning, but we wanted to see if we could cement the king coming supporting the pawn if it didn't kick off that way you know what if they decided to just block then i would have wasted potential valuable king movement so the queen comes down um i did have that in my head as well that was like a throwaway sort of calculation because all i have to do is bring my queen here and um, support the rook so they did go back and we just moved the queen back i'm thinking that they're going for repetition for the draw and no, they go for the movement that we expected. Did take a while over it now because I was working through the calculation just to make sure that it did actually work. So we captured and they captured. And then we brought the queen across following the calculation that we had um, guessed a while back. And then they pushed and then we could go on to the rook. And... I was waiting for them to take the pawn with the rook. I was so waiting for it because it just felt so beautiful. 
the movement just felt so beautiful. You know, if you know the chomping at the bit throughout the whole of the game to get this pawn, just take it. Then we take with the check, but they didn't do that. So they actually captured. So we captured back. So I'd covered this one as well. You know, if they did take, then we take, and then we're just bringing the queen back again to protect. So it's looking pretty even, Stevens. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns. Positionally, if I was a betting man, I would say, well, I'd slightly give it to white, only because of the aspect of, as you can see, the arrows showing the queen coming down here, and it's, it's on two pawns. The queen is protecting this pawn, but it's got this pawn in its sights. Our king can move to protect it quite easily but we're still on the back foot because we're being led by white we haven't gone past the halfway mark apart from the rook going up here and that that was our only bit of activity the rest is now looking to try and build some counter defense work as best possible we do have a check on the king here but to me that's like a nugatory check it's a waste of time because i've got pieces to be looking to defend so the queen does come down looking for it. So we bring the king up. And at this point, I did see all of this before as well. I put this in my roller text. This is why I wasn't extending the pawns. And I'm thinking, well, I don't... It, it doesn't look like a super power win. I think it's only a super power win if we allow them to... get towards our king... Because if they do take, we can take with this pawn. And this pawn is going to be on the queen. So if his rook takes our rook, we just take his queen off the board with the pawn. So that's why I wasn't too bothered about that. And I think they sensed that that was going to be the case once they'd done this move. Because... We moved our king, happy in the situation that if they do push, we we're going to take with the pawn here. So they moved their queen. So whether they actually saw that particular manoeuvre or they saw a greedy munch, as the arrows showed, of him just coming here and basically looking to get my queen off the board through a kind of discovery on this side. So we keep moving the king across, well aware that the queen is potentially coming across and coming for the pawn, but our rook can go and defend whilst our king is supporting this pawn in the centre in front of the rook. So they do, so we bring the rook across. So in human eyes, when you're looking at this, it, it looks it looks fairly drawish, doesn't it, to me? Um, the opponent doesn't look like they can make any way in. There's no headway in at all. So they bring their queen down, looking for the magical square here. So if I was asleep, get something off the board if you got that position. So we bring the king back, stopping that action. And then they bring the queen back. So let's just take, take a quick look at what the computer says. The draw has been agreed in the human eyes. Yeah, so plus five. 